Hi there! This is Sunny Sunset with another installment of ICANN Software Reviews. And today I'm installing JV16 Power Tools 2009. I've already downloaded it from the vendor's website at macecraft.com, so let's get started. As you can see, this looks like the standard installation interface, complete with choices for full compact and custom installation, but I'm going to choose full installation. And I'm going to use all the default settings. Now, let's click Install. Whoa, that was fast! But it is only a 5 megabyte program, after all. And it starts automatically right after installation. I like that. Here you get to set up the language you'd like to have all your instructions in. Wow! There's a lot more languages here than there were in the previous version, including one of the more rarer ones, Slovak. I'm impressed! Let's see what that looks like. Alright, let's go back to English. This little quick tutorial is a nice feature. I haven't seen anything like this in any of the similar programs I've tried. But don't worry, you're safe. Stay cool. Enjoy. Life is too short for reading instruction manuals. I like that. And some more tips. Still more tips. Just click Next and you'll be fine. And some optional things to sign up for. More technical stuff for the gurus. Are there any gurus watching? Raise your hand. I don't see any, so if you don't know what this page is all about, just click Next. But I happen to like getting messages about what my program is doing, so I'm going to go ahead and click to have it show me the messages. And some more technical information. I really like this short tutorial. Let's click Next. So now the program seems to be analyzing something. Let's see how long it takes. Well, great! This is showing me the health of my system. I like that. By the way, this main window looks really nice. The graphics are superb. I mean, this is amazing for only a 5 meg download, especially with all the features that it has. However, this little message window appears to have a problem. Some of the notes are tucked under the taskbar, and I can't seem to move it to get it to stay someplace else. I can't hold on to it long enough to read it. I think this needs work. It's a great idea, but not well implemented. So basically, this product is for cleaning and optimizing your computer. It claims to fix computer problems like crashes and make it work faster. So let's see what we have here on the main window. On the top, we have access to 24-hour online technical support. That's nice. You don't have to go hunting for support like you do in some programs. My computer is permanently offline, however, and that's why it shows support to me offline. And there's the handbook next to the online support, but we'll look at that later. So here we have the registry tools, and these tools let you clean and optimize the Windows registry. Okay, I can quickly show some of these tools. The most popular tool is most likely the registry cleaner. So let's see how that works. So the registry cleaner has quite a few different settings, but I've always used the default settings and it's always worked well. So let's click start. So rather than watch paint dry, or rather while we're watching the progress bar progress, let's talk about why you need a registry cleaner. I mean, after all, how many of you were warned never to touch the registry, never play around in the registry, unless you knew what you were doing, and had made a backup of the registry first? All of you, right? Me too. Well, there's a good reason for that. The Windows registry is a very important part of your computer system, but it's also extremely complex. It's the engine behind the Windows operating system, and it's where Windows stores the indexing information that tells it where all the parts and pieces for every program and driver are located within the operating system so that everything can work efficiently. Only those well experienced with the registry have the skills necessary to manually clean it, but even then it can take a long time. Even backing up the registry can be tricky if you don't know what you're doing. But if your computer is not running the way it did when you first purchased it, you most likely have errors in your system registry. Yes, most computer problems are a direct result of a corrupted registry. For example, if you've experienced any of these problems, your registry probably needs help. Your system is not as fast as it was when you first got it. Your computer crashes or freezes up and you don't know why. Startup is not as fast as it used to be or it crashes on startup. You have longer than usual loading times for programs. Error messages are popping up and programs are not working. Even the dreaded blue screen of death that appears to point to hardware malfunctions can be caused by registry corruption. Yes, hardware. But don't worry. A good registry cleaner will automatically scan and fix almost any problems that result from an error or corruption in the registry so that this can be an easier fix than reloading your operating system. 
which we all dread when we call tech support, and they insist that what you think is a hardware problem is actually a software registry issue, and you need to reload Windows. Ah, it's finished the scan. Well, let's see what it's found. All right, it's finished analyzing, and it took 208 seconds on my 60 gig dual partition hard drive. It found over 3,000 errors. 800 of those were erroneous registry keys and over 2,300 erroneous registry entries. Well, what can I say? Hmm. I really need to be more diligent about maintaining my computer, especially if I'm going to be doing all these software reviews. By the way, I really like this image tab system that this product uses. And here we have some nice looking graphical statistics of the results. And here are some more statistics. And some more statistics. If you're one of those people who love statistics, you're going to love this program. It is full of statistics. And here are all the errors that the program found for my computer. To fix them, just select All and click Fix. But I'll do that later. I'll just hit Close for now. Now I'd like to show you the next tool. And here we have some file tools. You can search for files, undelete deleted files, <laughs> that's handy, find duplicate files, and so on. A really wide array of features here. Let me just show you the file finder, and you'll see how extensive this program really is. Basically, this tool does everything the Windows Search for Files or Folders feature on the Start menu can't do. So let's walk through the tabs here. Uh, let's see, we can, uh, here we can define from where to search. You can search from multiple folders or drives at the same time. Just click Add to get to the browser window and choose your search locations. You can define that we're looking only for files of certain size. You can also define date settings. So you can, for example, search for files that were created yesterday. And you can define to only look for files with certain attributes. And on top of this, you can search files by their contents. Oh, that's handy! And by owner. And you can do all these with one search. So you can search for, say, files that are over 10 meg, which were created last week, which contain the word work, and that have been created by me. Well, you just can't do that with Windows Basic Search, but you can with JV16. Anyway, let me close this down. Now let's take a look at the system tools. I mainly use the software uninstaller in this section. You know, it's difficult sometimes to remove a program from your computer, like RealPlayer, for example, or even Adobe. They kind of leave parts and pieces of themselves behind. So the tool basically lists all the programs and games it detects that are installed on your computer, and it allows you to easily uninstall them. I have quite a lot of programs here that I can uninstall, and the nice thing is I can uninstall them cleanly. I'll just hit close for now. And here are some of the privacy tools, ways that you can delete your history so nobody will know where you've been. I like that. And it doesn't take long to scan at all. You find the backup tools. These allow you to manage the backup files that JV16 creates when it automatically backs up your registry before performing a fix on it. You may have noticed I have no backup files, but that's because I didn't let JV16 fix anything during our review here. And, of course, the Settings tab. That lets us get back to all the settings that we had to set up when we first installed the program. If you're one of those who likes to have drop-down menus, that option is available to you also. Under the first heading, we have the Settings tool and the Backup tool, and the ability to run a scan directly from the menu. And you can change your language on the fly. And this shortcut menu is handy. Everything you have buttons for down the left-hand side are found under here, in Tools. And, of course, all the help files. And speaking of help files, here's the 83-page handbook in PDF format, with a rather extensive table of contents for in-depth information about the program. And there is our brief overview of JV16 Power Tools 2009. But don't take my word for it. Go check it out yourself. This is Sunny Sunset with the ICANN Software Reviews. See you next time.